Hey guys, what is up? We are going to make a fun video today. It is dollar store books, specifically Dollar Tree right there versus thrift store books. We're going to see which can you make more money selling. Uh, it's going to be a fun video. Let's get into it. All right, let's go. What's happening here is we're in the warehouse. I've already done all the thrifting uh, and I'm going to comment on the video that I took and tell you exactly what I'm thinking. And I want you to let me know in the comments below, do you like this? What do you want to see more of? I'm going to start the video. You're going to watch the video. Walking into the Dollar Tree. This one is smaller than what I'm used to. The book selection, as you can see here, a lot of like crossword puzzles. I'm not going to scan those right now. I'm going to focus on these books. And then over on the end cap as well, there's more books right here. Uh, the kids' books are up there, but down here we see a lot more fiction books, uh, maybe some non-fiction books, I'm not sure. Usually non-fiction are better, uh, but we're going to scan them all and find out. This one here, Joe Gould's Teeth. Ooh, that little mark down there is called the remainder mark. We can't sell that as new. So when uh, the way Dollar Tree gets their books is they buy them in bulk from distributors or, or bookstores or whatever it is, and uh, if they don't want them being resold as new because it might hurt their market share, they're going to mar the books on the bottom with a marker or they're going to cut them or something. So um, what we have to do then is sell them as like new if we want them. That book was not a winner. It was not worth very much money at all. Or I guess, well, we're going to see it as I'm talking ahead of myself. But this book, what I had to do because uh, on the back of the barcode, there is a ASTD sticker, which is what uh, Dollar Tree uses to... Um, denote that it's a, a dollar store, you know, bulk book or whatever. They don't want to have their individual barcodes or ISBNs in the system. They want to have one number, and so they cover up the actual barcode with that number. But that doesn't mean it's impossible for us to use. It just means that uh, what we have to do is open the book up and check the ISBN. So on this book right here, sometimes what you can do is you can cover up the barcode, the ASTD sticker barcode, and get the bottom millimeter of, uh, of the actual barcode couldn't get that here, so again I had to input the ISBN. The ISBN is the number you're scanning. So most barcodes, if it isn't a paperback book, is going to have the ISBN uh, as the actual barcode. When you get into more like romance novels that are like, uh, you know, mass market paperbacks is the right word. They're like the small little books and you open the cover and they have a barcode on the inside. That's what you scan for those. But for these books, we're all either doing back cover ISBN or um, or or barcode, mostly ISBN. So the heart, the hearts of men that I just scanned, that book's a winner. You can see that the Amazon price is seventeen seventy five, and then the the lowest price we're gonna see is seventeen sixty nine. Those are definitely profitable books. Ooh, look at this. Okay, so this is this is funny right here. What I told you about um about the books being from other stores. That book there still had its Target sticker on, so Target bought all these books from the distributor, whoever they use. They couldn't sell these books, so in turn, after being bought from a distributor, they're being passed on to the Dollar Tree, and in turn being passed on to me. Anyone who has an issue with retail arbitrage, that view, that video, that shot right there should just show you that, oh, I'm wrong about everything, because if Target sells their inventory to Dollar Tree, who then sells it for a single dollar. Meanwhile, it's still being sold, or it was sold in Target for $15. What does that tell you about pricing? Hmm? Now would be a good time to explain to you what I'm actually doing. So I have my phone out. I have an app called Profit Bandit. Profit Bandit's like 10 bucks a month. Uh, you can also use the Amazon seller app if you have an Amazon account, that's free, but I use this as 10 bucks a month. I like it because it shows me the sales rank, it shows me how often things are selling, and the way I'm getting these shots is I'm screen recording myself using the app. And so when I scan an image, I'm recording the app looking for a barcode. That's what you're seeing. This one right here, Amazon selling it for $16.46. But the buy box is all the way down to 1150. So yeah, it's still profitable, but only marginally. So for that first book, I found two of them initially, and you're gonna see me find a third one later. And then for that book, there was three or four in the shelf too. That's kind of the benefit uh, of doing retail arbitrage sourcing, is if you find one item that works, most likely there's gonna be a whole cache of them at the store, and you can scoop them all up. You're gonna see how that differs in a few minutes 
from thrift store sources. So when you look at this, uh, the profit number in the bottom right corner, in this case, a negative one cent profit, take into account the buy cost as well. What that shows you, that, that, that loss number or the profit number, that takes into account shipping to Amazon, because these are FBA, so we're not mailing them to customers. That takes into account the storage fee based on the sales rank, uh, and it takes into account just those two, just inbound shipping and storage, which are your FBA fees that, when I make these videos, dum-dums always go, well, what about shipping costs? Well, that book's not gonna sell. And even though I'm showing you, yes, it is gonna sell, and even though I'm showing you, yes, after those marginal five cent fees, it's still profitable, they're still gonna say that, but just so you know, those of you who are smart enough to watch the whole video and not see the title and comment, uh, the number in Profit Bandit, yes, it does take those numbers into account. Again, I have to put in the ISBN manually. If you use an app like Scoutly, they have an option where you can actually scan the bar, the ISBN, and it uh, shows up faster. I'm using Profit Bandit. It's not especially for books. It's not like uh, Scoutly, for example, is especially for books. This is a general thrift store app, and that's why I use it, because the people who are watching these videos, they don't only care about books. They care about how to make money, and so if you can save money by only having one app, or if you only have one app on one phone you use, the circumstances are endless where this is beneficial to you. Uh, so I just take it, you know, understand that, that there are more apps. It's not just this one. Sometimes, uh, if there's no ISBN or it's not easy to find, I can look up the book title, and then you go off how the cover looks. This one is Purity, a novel by Jonathan Franzen. And uh, yeah, low sales rank, 381 is not bad. Boom, another copy of, uh, of the men of hearts, the hearts of men. Who cares what it's called? What we care about is that we're making money off of it. One dollar into 17 after fees. You're making a lot more than minimum wage. Let's just put it that way. Wow, that was not what I expected. Smaller dollar store. This Dollar Tree is in Saline, Michigan, so the book section is much smaller. And so when I walked over, I was thinking, I don't know if I'm gonna find any books. But I did, I found duplicates of some winners. So all in all, I only spent like 15 minutes in there. Uh, I ended up buying six books because we found an extra copy of one of those winners. And uh, I'll go over the, the winning soon. Hey guys, one quick thing too, before we go to the next thrift store, I want to tell you about Payability. Payability sponsored this video. They're paying me to teach you how to sell on Amazon because they know that their service is so good, they're gonna draw in customers that way. If you're selling on Amazon, you know about the two week wait. You sell something, you wait two weeks or up to two weeks to get paid. It can be very, very annoying, but Payability solves that. They help you get your money faster when you sell something they front you the money, they take a 2% commission, and uh, you can then reinvest your profits. It's a great way to do business. I use them all the time. I love Payability. You should too. Check them out. I totally forgot too, if you are watching my videos, click the link below and you'll get $250 free. You have to be accepted. You can't just be anybody up the street looking for charity. But if you are an Amazon seller and you get approved, who doesn't want money? Okay, next thrift store. We're now in the thrift store. This is a Salvation Army. You can see tons and tons of books. I'm not expecting too much here. It's the middle of the day, it's been picked over, but I wanna give you a realistic look. At, let's say you wanna go sourcing on your lunch hour and you have a half hour, you know, lunch hour, you have a half hour to actually do stuff. The other 30 minutes is spent driving in traffic. So you have limited, precious time. Do you wanna to go to a Dollar Tree or do you wanna to go to a thrift store? At my thrift store, the books cost 15 cents. So the profit here, the ROI is gonna be a lot higher. But again, at the end of the day, what we care about is money made, not necessarily ROI. You see right there, $3 FBA, huge loss. I would never sell that. It's, it's ridiculously cheap, given that's an FBA book. The Neon Wilderness, $13. But again, the sales rank is 3.5 million. It is unlikely that's gonna sell. Master Strokes, a golf book. I try to find non-fiction books or books with utility. This one, decent sales rank, but at 772, not profitable. Lots of misses here. Beer and Circus, book about college sports. Let's see what we got. Low sales rank, used buy box is, uh, is under eight bucks, too cheap. 
What else do we have? February Flowers. Oh, man, sales rank is too high. 3.5 million. That's just too high. What do we have next? You see I'm scanning way, way more books. It's way faster. But when you look at it, I'm spending about 20 minutes at each store. One place I scanned 8 or 10 titles. One place I scanned 45 titles. And if you do this for hours and hours and hours, you begin to see where the money starts to build up. Ready Player One. This book I know is a winner. It's fiction, but it's brand new. Uh, not brand new, but it's relatively new. The book's not in new condition, but I can sell it for $10 or $11. I'm going to pull it off the shelf, and I'm going to sell it because even though I'm only a couple of bucks, it's going to happen so fast, and it'll get the ball rolling, at least on today's sourcing trip. This book, more fiction. Fiction, again, isn't the best, but let's see. Talking as fast as I can. Man, very low sales rank. One book is super low, $7.74. The next one is at $12 and change. I'm going to keep that book because I'm going to list it at $12. And even though I'm not the lowest price right now, the sales rank is so low. I mean, $36,000, you are selling multiple copies a day. It's so low that that person who undercut the market and they're trying to compete against the merchant-fulfilled books, they're going to be out of the picture. And as soon as they sell theirs, I will be able to have the used book buy box. And if the new buy box is 15 and the used is 11 or 12, someone's going to want to save that money and buy my book. This book right here, same story as Ready Player One. It's a low sales rank book. Yeah, 30,000. Someone undercut the market, some dumb dumb. We'll grow in at $11, make a little bit of money. Faith Encounter. Ooh, 4.6 million, that's too high. That's too high unless it's over 100 bucks. What I do is if a book is like a 5 million sales rank and it's a niche, it has to be a niche. So like, for example, what I always talk about is I sold a book called Concrete Bridges for $375 or $335, somewhere above 300, but less than 400. The sales rank was 7.5 million. It sat for eight months. Now I'm not saying every book of that sales rank is going to sell in eight months, but I rolled the dice and I said, okay, I'll pay a couple bucks in storage fees, but the potential win is so, so high. And it wasn't even a couple bucks in storage fees. It was more like probably a dollar fifty in storage fees. It was a big book, but it wasn't there for longer than a year. So I only had two months of long-term storage fees. Um, but what I would have done is after a year, if it hadn't sold, I would have disposed of it. I do that up to about 10 million sales rank. If the book is nonfiction, usually it could be like a tarot card book or it could be like a, a book about religion as well. But usually what I'm sticking to is nonfiction stuff because those are the ones where someone might need that kind of uh, old knowledge, you know, like concrete bridges. Those haven't changed much over the past 50 years. If it's a book on like web programming, always trash it. No one cares about that. But stuff that has more staying value that holds on longer, that's when I'll begin to take the risks. I'd like to explain what happens when you see a prime price super low, even though the new price is like five, 10 bucks higher for these low, low value books. What the person is doing is they're repricing to be uh, the lowest used book price, but they're also setting a limit. So usually like when we see 262, that person's probably making like $1 on that book. I, I would be, I would not be surprised if, uh, if they're making about a buck after, you know, fees and everything. Because when you use a, a service like Inventory Lab, which I use, you can say, okay, I want this price to go, this book to be priced as low as what a $1 profit is. It's kind of a dumb way to do things in my opinion, but a lot of sellers do that. So that book there, it said, uh, advanced reading copy, uncorrected proof. The rules on Amazon, what they say is, if that book is still in print, you cannot sell that. But if the book's out of print, you can sell that. Because I have no clue if the book is in or out of print, I would assume it's out of print, but I don't know for a fact, I'm not gonna even look it up. It's just not the kind of thing I wanna do. It's a, a risk for probably like a dollar at most, so mm, holding off. This one is so low, right? So I could sell this book for like $8.99, even though the new price is $9.85, because what's gonna happen is that book is gonna be eventually it's going to sell out where there's going to be a one day delay 
where there's gonna be someone who wants to buy a used copy. And even though I'm only gonna make like two or three bucks off of it, I'm paying 15 cents for it. The sales rank's really, really low. That's not a book that I would buy every day, but because I'm making this video, and because I don't wanna go away empty-handed, and because I wanna give you a realistic view of what you can make while you're sourcing at a thrift store, I'm gonna keep it and put it in the total. This book right here, A Tribe Apart. I like this book. Low sales rank, the new buy box is at $17. That 814 book is gonna get cleared out soon. I'll sneak in around 15 bucks and I'll probably sell in a few months. Again, this book doesn't have a barcode on it, but there's a uh, there's a UP or a ISBN code in the bottom left corner. It's in new condition. If it's going for 35 bucks new, I'll buy it and sell it as new. But if it's not, or if the sales rank is too high, then it's gonna be uh, it's going back on the shelf. Arms from the sea, yeah, three and a half million new price under 10 bucks. No, thank you. Here's how it all shook down. The basic gist of it is that the Dollar Tree is going to be easier, more convenient, and thrift stores are going to be a little bit trickier, but more money lives on those shelves. $33.35 per 20 minute sourcing at the Dollar Tree and $42.80 per 20 minute sourcing at a thrift store. Those numbers are not what you're going to get exactly. They're going to vary by location, by how good you are, by the time of day you're there. But this gives you, in my opinion, a very basic but consistent idea of what you'll be seeing at Dollar Trees and what you'll see at thrift stores. All right, guys, that was the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and big shout out again to Payability. They sponsored the video. They want you to succeed so they can make money. If you don't get how marketing works and this sponsorship upsets you, you can go. Because if they're paying me to teach you, that's win-win. Win, 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 win. Thanks, guys. Remember, don't be a shithead. See you later.